Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the documentary titled Casey Anthony's Parents, The Lie Detector Test? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I will offer a brief background of the Casey Anthony case, including the documentary where she gives her side of the story, move to a summary of the documentary about her parents, then offer my analysis. Casey Anthony was born in 1986 and lived in Orlando, Florida, with her father George and her mother Cindy. She had a daughter named Kay Lee in 2005. On June 9, 2008, Casey and her daughter moved out of her parents' house. Casey's daughter, Kaylee Anthony, was last seen alive on June 16, 2008. A month later, on July 15, Casey's mother, Cindy Anthony, called 911. She told the operator that her granddaughter, Kaylee, had been missing for a month. Casey also talked with the 911 operator during the call. She offered a bizarre story about how she dropped Kaylee off at a nanny. When she returned to pick her up, there was no answer at the door. The police investigated and found out that the nanny story was fabricated. Casey also lied about working at Universal Studios. She was arrested for child neglect and for charges related to lying to the police. She was released on bond in August. In October, Casey was charged with additional offenses, including first-degree murder. In December, the body of Kaylee Anthony was discovered in a wooded area off a road. Her cause of death was undetermined, but the police believed she was murdered. In May of 2011, Casey Anthony went on trial for murder. Her defense argued that her father, George, must have been the killer. On July 5, Casey Anthony was found not guilty on all charges related to Kaylee's death, including the first-degree murder charge. Casey was only convicted of four counts of providing false information to law enforcement. Later, on appeal, two of those convictions were overturned. Casey was released from jail in July of 2011. No one else was ever charged in connection with the death of Kaylee Anthony. In 2022, Casey Anthony was featured in a documentary titled Casey Anthony, Where the Truth Lies. A more accurate title would have been Where Casey Lies. In this documentary, which I covered in a separate video, Casey accused George of committing offenses of a sexual nature against her when she was young. In addition, she suggested that he may have done the same thing to Kay Lee, and she accused him of murdering Kay Lee. Casey claimed that on June 16, 2008, George came to her holding Kay Lee's body, which was wet, as if Kay Lee had drowned in the pool. George told her that he would take care of the situation. I guess Casey was suggesting that George had the power to resurrect people. She explained her deceptive behavior by saying that George directed her to lie. Casey had been manipulated for her entire life because of the trauma she experienced. George Anthony has denied any wrongdoing. Now moving to a summary of the documentary titled Casey Anthony's Parents, The Lie Detector Test. This documentary featured a journalist who interviewed George and Cindy. It also featured a former FBI agent who was supposedly an expert polygraph examiner. A polygraph is also called a lie detector test. This is a pseudoscientific nonsense machine that law enforcement officers use to manipulate people. It does not detect lies. I'll talk more about this in the analysis. The idea behind the documentary was that both George and Cindy would take a lie detector test to prove that they had nothing to do with Kaylee's death. Their lives have been dominated by this tragic death and they have been the target of harassment. The couple wanted to clear their names. George was given two lie detector tests. One featured questions about Casey's allegations involving sex. The second featured questions about being involved in Kay Lee's disappearance or death. Cindy was given one lie detector test containing items related to the idea that George told her something about his alleged wrongdoing. Not surprisingly, both George and Cindy denied any wrongdoing during the lie detector tests. 
In a dramatic scene at the end of the documentary, the former FBI agent revealed the results of the tests. He indicated that both George and Cindy passed. They were being truthful when they denied wrongdoing. The documentary ends with George and Cindy talking about how happy they are about their belief that they have been vindicated. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. The polygraph is a key part of the documentary with Casey Anthony's parents. What does this machine do, and is it accurate? Does it truly possess magical abilities to detect deception? A polygraph is a machine that records physiological responses, like heart rate, respiration, sweat gland activity, and blood pressure. That is all it does, but it is used by polygraph examiners as a tool to attempt to detect deception. A polygraph examination involves a series of questions asked by an examiner to a subject. In the case of this documentary, the examiner was a former FBI agent, and George and Cindy were the subjects. The questions fall into three categories, irrelevant, relevant, and control. As the name suggests, irrelevant items are not scored. Only relevant and control items are scored. Every administration of a polygraph involves the examiner being deceptive. The examiner explains to the subject that the machine is capable of detecting lies, when in fact this statement is demonstrably false. Research has repeatedly concluded that polygraphs cannot detect lies. The idea here is that the subject is fearful because they believe the lies of the examiner. The test is completely based on fear. The subject is deceived into believing the test has capabilities it simply does not possess. During a pretest interview, the examiner gets the subject to lie in order to create control or comparison questions. After this stage, the examiner asks all the questions and the subject responds yes or no to each one. The physiological reactions to the control and relevant questions are compared. If the reaction to control questions is less than the reaction to relevant questions, then, according to pro-polygraph nonsense peddlers, the subject is being deceptive. In reality, this is not true because there is no unique physiological response pattern to deception. People do not automatically behave in a specific way when they are lying. What about the accuracy of the polygraph? Research has established that polygraphs perform no better than chance at detecting deception. However, the complete polygraph examination often involves an interrogation strategy. When this strategy is used in conjunction with a polygraph, the accuracy of the test is somewhere between 60 and 70 percent, which is the same as some interviewing techniques without using a polygraph. Essentially, a polygraph is a prop that is deployed during an interview. It measures something that has nothing to do with the topic of interest. Using a polygraph to detect lies is like using a vehicle's speedometer to measure tire air pressure. Item number two. In the documentary, the polygraph examiner claimed that the average accuracy of the polygraph is between 85 and 90 percent. This is not true based on the research. I don't know where this number came from, but there is no scientific reason to believe that claim. The examiner also implied that there is a connection between physiology and deception. As I mentioned, this is not true. The journalist who took part in the documentary told George and Cindy that the polygraph had a high degree of reliability. I find it curious that he did not mention validity. Reliability is when a test provides consistent results over multiple administrations. Validity is the degree to which the test measures a theoretical construct it claims to measure. It is possible for a test to be reliable, but not valid. The classic example of this is a clock that runs fast. If it consistently gains a specific number of minutes every hour, then it is reliable. However, it is not valid because it does not display the actual time. In a sense, a polygraph looks up to a clock that runs fast because polygraphs are not reliable or valid. Item number three, it seems clear from the documentary that both George and Cindy believed in the accuracy of lie detector tests. 
George felt he had to pass the test to clear his name. The stakes were high. Everything was riding on the outcome of the test. Cindy had a panic attack during one of the interviews with the journalist. The marriage between George and Cindy appeared to hinge on the outcome, and George even implied that he would not want to stay on earth if he failed the test. This highlights one of the ethical dilemmas about promoting polygraph nonsense on a documentary. George and Cindy are real people with real feelings. They deserve to be told the truth. Item number four, the weight of Kaylee's death on her maternal grandparents was tremendous. Cindy indicated that it was a daily struggle for her and George to stay together, and George said that Kaylee's murder consumes their lives. The couple's marriage appeared to have some problems. During Cindy's polygraph examination, she rated the quality of her marriage as six or seven out of ten. George felt as though her response was hurtful. At one point, George seemed frustrated with Cindy. He said that she wanted to control the situation, and he mentioned separation as a possibility. I don't know if George realized in that moment that Cindy could someday watch the completed documentary and she would know what he said. Maybe that was the point. That must be one of the most indirect communication methods that a married couple could ever adopt. Item number five, one segment of the documentary covered a text message exchange between Casey and Cindy. Casey asked Cindy for Kaylee's ashes. Cindy refused the request. Casey responded by alleging that George had committed offenses like murder. She stated, quote, that's who has the answers, always has and always will, unquote. Casey suggested that Cindy chose George over her and Kay Lee, and this was the biggest mistake of Cindy's life. She added that she would pick up Kaylee's ashes when Cindy was dead. It's clear that Casey's entire strategy at this point is blaming her father, George. She has no other explanation for Kaylee's death outside of admitting involvement, which she will never do. Casey is unwilling just to remain silent. For some reason, it is important to her to blame other people. It's almost like she's trying to deceive herself. Item number six, the point of the documentary was for George to improve his public image. Unfortunately, he didn't necessarily do himself any favors in this regard. At one point in the pretest interview, George had concerns about a question related to Kay Lee, which read, quote, did you conceal her whereabouts, unquote. It seems like a fairly straightforward question. He explained his concerns by saying he was overthinking, but it's clear Cindy was confused as to why her husband had any trouble with this question. Furthermore, at Kaylee's funeral, George had notoriously talked about how he would smell her sweat. Casey Anthony used this to impugn his character. George failed to offer a satisfying explanation for this creepy statement. There was no lie detection going on in the documentary, but one could argue that there was some creepy detection going on. Item number seven. At the end of the documentary, the journalists claimed that the experience of George and Cindy being cleared felt momentous. Cindy talked about how she could have her husband back. George stated that he could be happy again. I don't think that George and Cindy were involved in Kaylee's death, but my opinion has nothing to do with the results of a polygraph. The couple's truthfulness is not readily apparent, and I would not expect it to be. However, Casey's deceptiveness is readily apparent. Now moving to my final thoughts. The Casey Anthony case is notorious and has frustrated many people. They do not know what to believe. They do not know who to believe. Was Casey guilty of murder? Did George have something to do with it? Did some type of bizarre family dynamic facilitate the crime? Some people are so desperate to know the truth they are willing to believe in magic, like polygraphs, in order to find a definitive answer in this case. There is no need for these magical beliefs. The truth can be found by examining the evidence. No one will ever know with certainty what happened. However, in my opinion, it is logical to believe that Casey Anthony was responsible for Kaylee's death, despite being found not guilty. Making a decision with one's best evidence is all that can be done in the situation.
pseudoscience is never the answer. It only brings more pain and confusion. Those are my thoughts on the documentary about Casey Anthony's parents. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.